some staff members are not interested, and that is a fact. Um, and it really does take a lot of energy sometimes to, um, to get some staff members to buy in. And there's a resistance factor sometimes, and you know, as with any change, you know, we always have some of those roadblocks in the way. I worked at Red Bank for many years, and we were very small when we started, and we went very large, so we are always about change. And I'm used to that. I'm used to some of those. And with those people, we continue to, to share our success stories. Guess what worked? Guess what worked on that dog? You're never going to believe how this worked on this dog the other day. And sharing those things, sharing the success, sometimes starts to chip away at that resistance. And I have a great example of that because I run, I, I'm a teacher, and uh, we have 23 dogs in our education program um, over at Red Bank Veterinary Hospital. My own dog, she's Jack Russell Mix, and I shared this story with Dr. Marty Becker. Um, she, I used to use her for the bad dog workshop because she was very, very difficult to hold. She's 22 pounds of just pure energy, and she's brachiocephalic, so you have to be very, very careful of her airway. She stresses out, and she does have seizures if she gets too stressed. Um, so she's a perfect dog to bring into the students. And I'm like, this is their teacher's dog. Be careful. If you make her seizure, stress her out. Uh, but in any event, she doesn't like to have her nails trimmed. Once Fear Free came in, we changed the workshop. And so we decided this is now the Fear Free workshop. So with Marley, we bring her in. We put her on a non-skid mat. We use gentle control. We use um, a sage green towel because that's a fear-free color. We spray it with pheromones. Um, I make sure that she's calm in the hospital as well. She has time to acclimate in the hospital. And when we do it, she is food-driven. And so I bring high-value treats. She gets chicken. And, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so I have one technician that's up front, and she's distracting Marley with her chicken or beef or whatever I happen to cook up the night before. I bring her in hungry. And so she knows, as soon as she gets there, we start rewarding her and touch gradient and uh, make, she's like, oh, this is lovely. Like, I'm getting awesome food and I'm getting petted. And then while this is happening, my other technician, Kara, is on her feet. And we do a fear-free pedicure with no restraint, no muzzle, no stress. And it's just a huge difference. And that's like, I, that's like just a perfect example of, of how well it works. And um, so it, we relate it to a positive environment, so we always go to the same place, do the same thing. Um, we have a clinical training center, so we use that. And it's like, oh, here we are, we're getting chicken. Oh my gosh, I'm getting chicken again. And nice good surface, and nice petting, and, um, and it works very well. And if she gets stressed, and she picks up on it, or we run out of chicken, um, and she starts to get stressed, we need to know when to pull back. Uh, because. You know, used to be we would just just hold them down until it's done. You know, because the owner's waiting. We don't do that anymore. Um, so we just, you know what? We have to come back another day. That's what we do.